mi tenesiea, i tenesiala ho, i teneshwala ho, i tapu elio, at the sesmala tenitina kukonlin. He look teneshkola win, kunz eats kuts nala, tenoweo, i yak and shwog, hai tapka. Eats kwantlin. Kuthana Mustioch Eat Kilach Homish Eat Lilotash Eat Homashquiam. I said hi. That <laughs> one never gets old. Don't say that with a mouthful of crackers. I am Ses Smolot. I come from Kwantlen First Nation. It's not far, it's just 45 minutes that way. I have family here. I learned my language here with the, my Homashquiam uh, people. I tell them will stay of my good people. I learned the, my language with them. And I'll never forget that. I come bearing gifts. Audrey, where'd you go? I'm sorry, I don't know your. Representing Kwanlin, this artwork is from my uh, Tenetitlan Kalokostan. His English name is Brandon Gabriel. He works for Greenpeace and whoever else hires him. <laughs> Who we have here is our seven laws. Shwayash, he luck, awadzun smetlinen. Siayat, shwali siowanash. Holitak, koltul, tanuch. Hope I didn't get those wrong. Health, happiness, humbleness, generosity, generations, forgiveness, and understanding. Not very many people can wear that on their back, but you can. That's I can't even put that into Juanitumka. I can't put that into English. We Kwantlen people stand with our sisters and brothers of the Skohomish, Salilwatash, and Musqueam First Nation. Eats Kwam Kwam Nathala, Kwam Kwam Nakwalawan, Kwam Kwam Nathala, Kwam Kwam Nashwali. I'm going to teach you two words today. Kwam Kwam. Kwam Kwam. What you're holding right there is Thala. Quam quam to Thala. Quam quam to Thala. Quam quam to Thala. Quam quam to Thala. If you're feeling under attack, quam quam to Kulawin. Quam quam to Thala. Quam quam to Shwali. I tell my students this. I teach the language now. I learned it. Now I go and teach it. When you're feeling under attack, at the Sesmalat and Itzanak. Otlin, say your name and say where you are from in the language that belongs to the land, it'll ground you. He hachlamatsu tana tamoch, swalamia. He hachlamatsu tana tamoch, he hachlamatsu tana tamoch. We are caring for the land. We are caring for Mother Earth. Shwomoch at tamoch, shwomoch at tamoch. The red people have been given two continents and we are to be taken care of that. And as my niece said, no one was listening. Now look at it. It's on fire. It reminded me of my grandfather would be your great grandfather, great, great grandfather, you young people. My grandfather's words when he said, one day your own mother will kill you. He got my attention right away. Everything's gonna be on fire, and we'll all start to pray. 
but it'll be too late. He was talking about Tamach, Mother Earth. Now we're listening. Now you're listening. Not so much. We are one. As all the young people were going by, I was translating all of your <laughs> signs into my language. Not so much. We are one. We are in this together. Thank you so much for your powerful, powerful words, um, Audrey and Fern, um, and for your song. Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Naya. And I'm Rebecca. And just again, we're in grade 12 and we're organizers with sustainability. So we'll be emceeing yeah. for today. <laughs> One month ago, during our general, uh, general strike on September 27th for climate justice, we shut down the city in the biggest protest in Vancouver's history. climate justice the forefront of the election and we are here now to show our new federal government that we will not stop taking to the streets to raise our voices and demand change. We are here today to keep building this momentum. Look at what we together have created. We are coming together from all walks of life to stand up against the biggest threat blocking a more just world. The enormity of climate catastrophe is overwhelming, but so is this crowd. And I know that I feel less fearful about the path we are speeding along when we gather like this, when I see how many of us do care um, and are working to create a more safe and beautiful world. The only way we're gonna get through this is by coming together like never before. So I want all of you to take a moment and introduce yourself to the people standing around you. Um, talk about why you came here today and thank each other for showing up. Signs. 
um, please show that we are really walking the talk. Okay, and with that aside, is everyone ready to hear our next speaker? I'd like to welcome three Tsleil-Waututh youth, each powerhouses in their own right, Kaya, Cedar, and Sarah. Yeah, we've been bumping into each other since birth. ACM's <laughs> close teeth start to slay with us, close teeth start to lay love, Heichka. Um, what I just said is my name is Cedar George Parker of the Tsleil-Waututh Nation and the Tsleil-Waututh Tribes, which is just south of here. We're a Coast Salish people. There was no borders a while ago, right? So we were able to freely go back and forth. So when I go up to the border guards, I tell them, I only come here out of respect for you guys. <laughs> but yeah, yesterday was a five-year anniversary um, of something that happened really bad in my life when I was in high school, which is not too long ago. And when I look at all the faces here, I look at everybody, I see a lot of you guys are in high school, you wake up every morning, you go to school, but we have to worry about what our environment is happening. That's why we can't go to school sometimes. And when I was your guys' age, I was in a high school shooting and some of my cousins and relatives died and it was one of the worst days of my life. Cause those are the people I went to school with every day, who I went to third period with, who I talked to every day, that I grew up with, my relatives and and, and I remember, this is why I'm in this fight, I remember going to the counselors, they bought the best counselors in the USA. But there was a lineup of counselors. We didn't have enough funding for grief. We didn't have enough funding to keep those counselors only for a couple days they were there. And I thought about all the money from the government should be going towards our youth, should be going towards renewable energy projects. Then I started finding out about businesses and how the government of the United States and Canada, get this, put billions of dollars of our taxpayers' money into projects like Trans Mountain Canada. No, that's not, that's not cool. That should be going towards social uplift programs for students. Who would love to have their university and college paid here from that money? That should be going towards the youth, by the youth, social uplift movements, for the people, by the people, all together. That should be going towards us instead of these companies who are taking their money. They have billions and millions of dollars. They don't need any more. What more do they need to take? Because if we don't stop this now, we're gonna have the reality and future of the orca whales. We we're saying that if we keep this up, it's going to be death to our planet, it's going to be death to us. The orca whale's already dying. The baby's already dying. Governor, I worked with Governor Ensley and the Orca Task Force in Washington State. We, call, we came up with three reasons why the orcas are dying. Pollution. Obvious. But, you know, you had to back it up with science. Noise pollution from tankers because they use that sonar, right? And the third was their food was being gone. So all these tankers are killing the orca whales. They can't find their food, they're starving. And our future is gonna be like that if we don't stand up and do something. Within 24 hours of this Trans Mountain Pipeline comes through, which it's not, because we're gonna stop it. But, you know, we, we have to stand up for the orca whales because that future is gonna be ours. And if you look at it, there's two cities, who knows where Fort McMurray is? Who knows where Houston, Texas is? <laughs> Travis Scott's from there. <laughs> so those are the two cities with some of the highest concentrations of cancer, both epicenters of a country, both epicenters of their country of oil. That's why we have to stand up for those people who have cancer. Those are young children breathing in those toxins. So if this pipeline gets built, one million people will get sick within 24 hours of a spill with an 80% chance of a spill in the next 50 years. That's the young people getting sick first and the elderly. That's why we say no means no. That's why we come out here and stand up. So, so close your eyes and 
think about, you know, close your eyes and think about those young people in our family, in our grandparents and our elders. Think about those ones this tall, knee high. That's, that'd be a young baby if it was my knee. I'm six foot four. Right? You know, right behind us right here. We did a study too and we asked all of the, all of the hospitals around here in Vancouver. We asked all the hospitals around here, can you contain that many people? And they said no. So if you close your eyes, this is what gives me the strength to get up and fight. It's my little brother, his name is Witwa. It's my nieces and nephews, Kalea and Romeo, who are this big. One is two years old, one's that, one's this big. And I, you know, I share this all the time, there's no people, but I, I always imagine them being one of the kids, walking up to their sink because they're thirsty, reaching their arms over, getting that water, and drinking it, and, and getting sick. Then I imagine myself going to the hospital and saying, sorry, we can't help. There's too many people here. That's the future that we're live, like the orca whales. It's sick for them. The babies are dying. And our babies are, are, are gonna get sick too, from the pollution. That's why we have to stand up, but we do have the solutions. Everybody look at the sun, not too long. You can, you know. So if you look at the sun, we have the solutions in the sun. So, I'm gonna tell you why it's bad. I mean, anybody could come up here and say it's bad. But I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you that we have solutions, and I'm gonna end with this. Think about everything that consumes energy right now. Look at all these buildings. Think of New York City. Think of Tokyo, the biggest city in the world. Think of your cell phone, your car, all the power in your house. Think about your computers. All, everything that consumes power, huge ships that go back and forth, the railways. So they did this study in Dubai. And this is what absolutely trembles me about which way we're going. And honestly, it's our government. We have to stand up to our government and tell them no means no. That that's our taxpayers' money and that that should go towards the people, by the people, so that we have a safe and secure future. <laughs> Standing here, you know, I'm, I'm not nomadic. My people are not nomadic. My grandmother fought, my great grandfather fought for the people on the land. My grandmother fought for the people on my land. My dad and my auntie fought for the people and the land. Me and my cousins right here will always stay on this land and fight for the people on the land. And my children will fight for the people on the land, but we're not alone because look at all of us. <laughs> Everything that we have, all those machines, all these cameras, everything that consumes energy in the world. Look at that sun. In Dubai, they did a study. 24 hours, what do you do in one day? That's 24 hours. This is how backwards our society and governments are. We have the money to put, we have government taxpayers' money to put that into renewable energy. 24 hours of the sun's energy that hits the earth can power everything, every single thing that consumes energy in the world for one year. That's the way that we have to go. But we have to be rich in the teachings, and I, and I tell my little brother already, he's fighting. It's the next generation fighting already for a climate. And I tell him, where are you from? He says, I am Dakhleila, Kosalish. What does that mean? That I'm rich but willing to share. Rich with what? Love. And that's what I feel here today. We're rich with love. And that's why we fight. And that's why we fight. It's for those little ones. That's why we fight. I was talking to this little kid right here. Um, what's your name? Huh? Philip? So I was talking to Philip right here. He's pretty young. He's right there. And, he, and I asked him, why are you here? And he said, I'm tired. I'm tired of what the, in the direction this world's going. And our young people are tired of it. My little brother says he wants to fish for salmon. So here's one for Trudeau. Here's one for Trudeau. All right, when I say, oh, we'll do a chant at the end. <laughs> I just wanted to say thank you, raise my hands, and uh, I'm gonna show you guys a, we're gonna keep it real at the end, all right? We're gonna keep it real. So uh, just, just keep that in mind, keep it real, right? So I'm gonna go off to, um, all right, I'm gonna throw it and you guys have to fight over it.
Royal Tanoya, Halia Queen Kushamin, Kaya George Queen Sna, Tanachin Kla Dachlela, Tanachin Kla Slewuta, Skalus Tan Man Sitzelta Slan Chisha, Halia Slan Sitla. I said hi again. <laughs> um, in my traditional language, my traditional Squamish language that I've been learning for this past year, I said, I introduced myself. My name is Kaya George, my traditional name is Halia. I come from the tsleil youth people and the Tulalip tribes. As many, many generations have before me, they've stayed on this land and love this land and love this inlet because it's a part of who we are as a people. When we look out into the inlet, we see we see so much love. We see our oldest grandmother, and we love and care for it the way we would a grandmother, the way we would a relative. And here today, I see I see a lot of love here. I see the orcas, I see the youth, and I see a lot of hearts, and that makes me so happy. A lot of love. Oh, thank you. <laughs> oh. Hi, Chika. of what this means to be here right now. The act of loving the earth, the act of protecting and fighting for the mother, our mother earth, is the very act of love itself. It's the act of loving the past. It's the act of loving the present and it's the act of loving the future and all the future generations to come. And that's what's gonna make us win, is that we have love in our hearts and love in our words. And that's who we are. And that's what we're going to show these governments and all, the, all these different parts of the world, all different walks of life, people are coming together and it makes my heart happy. On hot and squalowin, I say. On hot and squalowin, you lift my heart, you make me happy today to see this. Hi, Chika. And I want to thank you all for being so courageous. I see so many young people. I see so many young people from different walks of life, different places. And I want to thank you for being courageous. Thank you for being here. And in the moments, I understand these moments, it's hard to get up and speak, and sometimes you feel fear. But when I feel this fear, I remember, and I, rem I remind you all to remember this. Remember this voice inside that says, from, from my head to my toes, from my heart to my soul. I think of that word. I think of that word that my ancestors have been telling me, my grandmother has been telling me. And that word is rise and don't stop fighting, never stop fighting, never give up, never give up the future generations are depending on it, never give up because you have all your family behind you, you have all these people behind you, you have people from all different walks of life, all different parts of the country, from Australia, Canada, the United States, South America, Sweden, all these people coming together shoulder to shoulder, side by side, we're standing together and we are united. Woo. We are all together and we are all one and I want to raise my hands and say hi Chika. thank you for being together, thank you for being my relative in this fight and hi Chika. So like I said, just keep it real. Um, who's heard of the Watch House? So it's um, an indigenous-led resistance on a trans mountain pipeline. And um, let's just say that the troops have assembled. We took time to think. We've developed skills. And now with uh, all the support of the people, we're ready to go back on the mountain, and we're ready to stop that pipeline. So, all our allies, all our mothers, all our daughters, all our cousins, you know, we're all cousins. Um, come, come talk to one of us right up here, Slewatut, and we're going to get ready to, to stop that pipeline. Protect our oceans, protect our waters, and most of all, Tell Justin Trudeau that no means no. So when I say no means y'all say no, okay? Because 
When I was young, I remember uh, my mom would say, no means no, and I knew that, uh, I knew it really meant no, I got scared. So we all know that, right? We all know, we all know no means no. So this is a chant that we love because, you know, now because when we're children, our parents told us no means no. And now that I'm an older brother and uncle, I tell my young ones no means no. And Justin Trudeau is acting like a child. So we gotta tell him no means no. So when I say no means y'all say no. No means no. No means no. No means no. Hey, one more time for Trudeau. No means no. No means no. No means no. Uh, either my my dear brother Will, uncle, dad, Sarah, Cedar, um, Kaya, Stacy right here, and my auntie right here. And I just want to say, uh, raise my hands up to you guys and say thank you guys and keep those children in our hearts while we march today. That's why we do it. Awesome. <laughs> announcement we do have some sound set up right there in the middle of the crowd it's not a big deal if you can't see but the people who are around that please just keep boundaries and keep space around that so we can continue to be hearing everything that's being set up here thank you um, and finally we're gonna hear from Kanahu's manual <laughs> indigenous people. We live and breathe. We eat the salmon every single day and we're being impacted right now by climate change. There's some families that are used to getting 200 salmon to feed their families throughout the winter that have not got one single salmon this year. This is how we're being affected. It's taking food right off our dinner table, taking food right out of our children's mouth. This climate change impacted by industry in our lands that we never consented to. Right now, the federal government is pushing these treaty agreements to try to settle lands that has never been surrendered. The federal government is, has some tricks in, up their sleeve at, like they have since contact. We have never agreed for our lands to be invaded or occupied. We have never consented to it 
and we will never ever surrender or compromise. And I think that's one thing I say to the youth because I too started out as a youth in the Native Youth Movement. Like a lot of us Native here was the Native Youth Movement. And we fought hard and we got our wrists broken too. We occupied government buildings, we blockaded highways, and we talked about not just marching, but direct action to shut this shit down. That's the only thing that they're going to understand, is when we actually take action to shut them down. To know the power that we have, all the hearts inside of you, all those embers that kept you that fire going, now it's time to fuel that fire. Now that's time to fuel it. Fuel it whatever you have. Fuel that fire so it's a blazing, blazing fire that they can never stop. That fire is in all of us and to all you young people, that's who I raised my fist up today. To all the youth, out there, the young people, it's going to be you. You take that courage, you keep on fighting because the oil people are going to be gone. That old boy oil and gas club, the old boys club, out the door. that they don't want to mess with. So when we march, we march today, every footstep is a prayer. Every single footstep and every single breath that you take during this march is a prayer. Because we know through top scientists we can pray for water and it's actually going to change the crystals in that water. And it's going to make it beautiful. So that's what we're going to All the humans of the planet is filled with water. Our plants are filled with water. Our animals are filled with water. And our water throughout the sky and gas and, and form and solid in our glaciers. We're going to pray for all of this water. This water is our power. This water will be our weapon. This water can take life. This water can give life. And that water is in every one of us. Today, let's pray that this power of this water is going to continue to keep this water pure and clean for all of us till the rest of this planet exists. Thank you. One more thing, one more thing. I need to say this. It was Corporal Bo Bowden, or B-O-W-D-A-N, that broke my wrist, and we're suing the fuck out of him.
Australia, each and every one of you from Europe, you had Indigenous teachings before colonial impact of the church. You had your water teachings, you had your land teachings, you had respect for seven generations, and they came and took it all in the name of burning witches and making women filth. You need to look to your own ancestry as European people, as East Indian people, as African people, and understand the four-way directional medicine teachings are now. from unceded Treaty 6 territory. Please welcome Dakota. Thank you, I am blessed, Creator, to be here to speak on behalf of my ancestors and our children's futures. My name is Dakota Bear and my spirit name is Blue Thunder. I'm from unceded, unsurrendered Treaty 6 territory and I'm now situated in an unceded, unsurrendered Land to the Coast Salish peoples. I want to spread a message of hope, a message of unity, because this unity is beautiful. But I also want to expose Canada for the dark history, the theft of indigenous lands, and the crimes against humanity being committed still today from the Indian residential school where my great-grandmother was number 34 to the 60s scoop, to the millennium scoop. This is an ongoing genocide, but we are still here. We are still here. Beside me, my beautiful partner, my family, my mother, my grandmother. This is five generations, five generations of resiliency, five generations of resistance. We We are not conquered people. Canada has def has confined the indigenous people to 0.2% of their lands. Yet we continue to defend our traditional territories on the front line, stopping pipelines, stopping deforestation. No more pipelines. <laughs> My friend, my dear friend Kanahus from Tiny House Warriors, who was assaulted by the RCMP, the colonial government for standing up for what is right, for standing up for her, her family members and generations before her and after her. That was an act of sovereignty and we will continue to resist. <laughs> my auntie, my Nikoes, She's situated in Treaty 6 territory, the northern boreal forest, where they have plans to clear cut, clear cut that forest. Well, she went there. 
She exercised her treaty rights. She exercised sized her inherent rights and her title to the land. And she saved a portion of that boreal forest. That was an act of sovereignty. Look at the ground beneath your feet. We are on unceded, unsurrendered Cold Salish territories. Anywhere that you walk on Tara Island, you are stepping on an indigenous nation. And we are still here. The indigenous women, our leaders, our decision makers, our life givers, we must restore the balance and we must protect our women. We must protect our women. When I say protect our, you say people. Protect our people. Protect our people. When I say water is, you say life. Water is life. Water is life. When I say idol, you say no more idol. No more. Idol. No more. Idol. No more. Indigenous people make up five percent of the Earth's population, yet we defend. 80% of the Earth's biodiversity. 80%! After the crimes being and still being committed on the indigenous people, we still stand here proud, learning our languages. Even though there's an ongoing genocide against us, we are the fastest growing population in Canada. We are growing we are growing in numbers. We are breaking cycles and becoming the new wave of leaders because we are still here. This is for my daughter, my daughter's future, your children's futures. This is for Mother Earth because not only are we all connected, we are also connected to her. We are connected to Kisik, the sky, Eski, the ground, Nepi, the water. We are all connected. The four sacred directions on the medicine wheel. We are all a part of the medicine wheel here. And that's why we are here to stand up united to defend our Mother Earth. So we stand together. No more corruption. Pipelines have been approved, but they will not be built! They will not be built. So on behalf of my ancestors, behalf of my family members, the people that stand here, all of you great people, we are the change. We are the change that we need to see in the world. We stand together and the earth will shake beneath our feet when we march because together we are stronger. I want to end off by saying I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful to have the opportunity to speak. I'm so grateful here to stand with all of you people. Please give a big round of applause for the organizers of this event. We appreciate you. We appreciate you. So I have a text to action. So those who want to stay informed with I don't know more indigenous sovereignty, land defenders with tiny hoes, pull out your phones. Once you pull out your phone, I'm going to give you something to text. Once you text that number, we will always stay connected. One text will be sent out to all of you. And that's the technology we have today. We are stronger together. So if you have your phone, I'll give you one a minute just to pull out your phone. And once you pull out your phone, I'm gonna give you a number to text, okay? So this number that you're going to text is 306. 306, that's the first three digits. 900, that's the next three digits is 9006798. So it's 306. Nine zero zero six seven nine eight. You have that number in text. Protect. P R O T E C T. Protect. Text that number. Respond with that number. That will information will be stored in a database. Once we have upcoming actions, when we need you and we need to stand together, that's badass. Give a round of applause for that. Let's stand together. 
So please give it up for Tiny House Warriors, the land defenders, the water protectors. Thank you, everybody. My name is Dakota Bear, and I'm so honored to be here. Together, we're going to take on the streets. This is not the end. This is only the beginning. This is only the beginning. at the front begin moving. And just a reminder as well that we are going to be a non-violent march. We're here to spread love and hope and advocate for climate justice and we're going to demand this as we march, but we need to be peaceful about it. All of you are here today because you're hoping for a cleaner world and a more just world. We aren't here to offer up concrete solutions for the government to use, nor are we here as the hand of change. We are the catalyst to speed up the process. Many times, us climate uh, strikers get asked a question, but what are, what are you actually trying to do to help the environment? Why take time of your day when you can actually be in school studying for the, um, the help, help, how to help the climate? Or why don't you just be a scientist and help create a solution? These are simple questions with simple answers. How climate strikers are helping the environment is bringing the issue to the political stadium. We help to make climate action a forefront of the recent federal election. We bring light to the solutions that are proposed by hardworking scientists, entrepreneurs, and philanthropists. We are attacking the same problem of environmental catastrophe from a different angle. Yeah. <laughs> The scientists can keep making their technology and making solutions, but in the past, have they ever been listened to? No. James Hansen was shut up. It's been decades since climate change was announced and still we have not taken meaningful change. I am not in school because I am not learning about how to save the planet. We all know that our schools don't talk about climate change and the impending destruction. Yes, we try to do our parts by not only striking, but also doing cleanups, tree planting, clothing swaps, and gardening, but obviously these actions aren't covered in the news. We climate strikers aren't just young teenagers that want to be heard and get covered on the media. I'm not the scientist here. I'm not the politician here. I'm not a voter. The only power I have is my voice. But together with all our voices, we have the power to instigate change. We have the power to make people listen. At protests like this, this, you often hear people talking about our government and politicians failing us. But look at the election that happened this Monday. There were so many amazing candidates running with climate action at the forefront of their campaigns. These climate movements not only effectively helped to make climate justice a priority in the federal election campaign, but also made it a, a contentious issue in, um, in our daily conversations and in the debates. No matter the outcome of the election, we are in a government that is interested in taking climate action. Um, Unfortunately, like the problem with many acting forces in one room, it is hard to cohesively formulate a plan that will answer everyone's needs. So we ask you from all parties to set this issue aside from your party and we ask you to for some sort of war cabinet against the enemy, climate catastrophe. We want you to not be separated by any party, whether you're the Liberals, the NDP, the Greens, the Bloc Québécois, or Conservative, or Independent, or any label. We want you to work for our future together. Yeah. 
What is really holding us back from being able to take this meaningful action to fight the climate crisis is the fact that candidates and politicians are placing more importance on their careers and their parties than the people who are they are meant to represent. Many members of parliament do want to make meaningful change, but they are held back by their party that underscores their name on their business card. So what is next? After 2,000 people at the March 15th strike, 3,000 people at the May 3rd strike, more than 150,000 at the September 20 stri 27th strike across Cammy yeah. Bridge. And whatever this hectic amount is today, I cannot <laughs> estimate. <laughs> We're not stopping anytime soon. <laughs> the next International Day of uh, uh, um, Climate action will be November 29th. And from now until then, we will only keep building our power and our numbers. Plans are in the works, so stay tuned to our social media and on Instagram, Facebook, email, Twitter, and word of mouth. It is important that we do not lose this steam, especially after the election. We have to demand change from the new acting parliament. We need to make it their priority that our demands are heard. We need to hold them accountable for the actions that they take. We need to pressure them into making climate action their virtue and not their burden. So, November 29th, save the date. Striking here today is not a substitute for concrete change. Striking here today should not be the end of your environmental career. It should only be the beginning. Take action within your local communities, but think of the impact it has on other people. Act local, think global, as my friend has said to me. Striking here today should inspire you to do more because we are unstoppable. Another world is possible. Yeah. We are unstoppable. Another world is possible. We are unstoppable. Another world is possible. We are unstoppable. Another world is possible. We are unstoppable, another world is possible. We are unstoppable, another world is possible. We are yeah. <laughs> Um, thank you, Harrison and Allie. Wow, this crowd just keeps growing. It's amazing. Wow. Woo! Um, so now we're going to hear a song from Dakota. Uh, yeah. I, I got a really awesome song I want to share with y'all. It's a beautiful day. This is a beautiful song, and his unity is so beautiful right now. So... <clears throat> My, my name is Dakota Bear, my spirit name, Blue Thunder, musician stage name, DAC1. This song is titled Freedom, and I think it's so fitting because we just want to be free. And the people are standing together, there's power in numbers. So you can play that track back there. When I say water is, you say life. Water is, life. water is. Life. When I say protect our, you say planet, protect our, planet. protect our. Planet. When I say tiny house, you say warriors, tiny house, Warrior. tiny house. Warrior. You can play the track whenever, if, if you're having difficulties, I'm just going to keep uh, chanting up here. And then whenever you play, it, we'll just get right into it. <laughs> when I say idol, you say no more idol. Idol, no idol. No when I say no consent, you say no consent. No consent. No consent. No consent. I don't know if you're having trouble back there, but, uh, and I don't want to give you my password in front of all these people, but if you need to hear it, it's, 
It's three, two, five, one. Just keep the phone close to you. So there was a younger girl that like went back there and gave you my phone to one of the um, sound people, and uh, the person that has my phone, you just swipe the password. The track is right on there. It's, it's called Freedom. So there we go. Can we turn the beat up? Let's get right into it. Let's do it. Yeah, yeah. The song's title, Freedom, listen. Together there's power in numbers. We will not fall where you want us. We learn in the laws, you don't run upon us. You throw us in water, we know there's piranhas. The people they needing a leader, just know that I'm on it. I'm honest in everything that I do. Every word that I speak is true. The people that get it, they know that the picture is bigger. So pull up a seat and get listen. You putting your fist in the air. You know the resistance is here. You hear us off in a distance. We are the kids that you dismissed. We are the targets you just missed. We are descendants of humans and chiefs. Just know that our struggles are brief. Just know that we want in the same. I'm from the prairies, the plains. I go my hair out until I can braid it again. I'm no longer ashamed. I promise the people are harsh, so not go in vain. You hear my voice and the melody carry the pain. I do not do this for money or fame. I just want to be me. I just want to feel free. Is that too much? Should we ask? Look at the future, but learn from the past. I know that sometimes we clash, and it's just life. Chances ain't handed out twice. A man of my word and a man of advice. I just want to be free. We just want to live our lives. We just have to worry. Tell me, can you help me? I don't seem like you've been in a hurry. You playing judge and jury. I feel I'm under siege. Get the matches, burn the sage. Chapters overturn the page. Author of my destiny, but they telling me differently. We just want to live our lives. We don't want to have to worry. Tell me, can you help me? It don't seem like you've been in a hurry. That's why we've been doing the most I pack my suitcase and move to the coast I promise the next time I come to this city I'm bringing hope I'm bringing you and it's bigger than music Together we started a movement Together we stand, we shaking the earth as we moving As soon as you look for the answer, you see the solution Our minds are as clear as the water as soon as you see the pollution We want the freedom and not the illusion We are the warriors The ones that you read in the stories We are notorious I just want to feel free We just want to live our lives We don't want to have to worry Tell me, can you help me? It don't seem like you've been in a hurry You playing judge and jury I feel I'm under siege Get the matches, burn the sage Chapters overturn the page Author of my destiny But they telling me differently We just want to live our lives we we don't wanna have to worry. Tell me, can you help me? It don't seem like you've been in a hurry. I just wanna be me. I just wanna feel free. Can I can I get a fist in the air? A fist in the air for every single one of you, land defenders, water protectors. We are the change together. We are powerful. The people that standing together, this power in numbers. Thank you so much. Next, we have to hear from Sophia Sedaris. Sophia is a young activist and lives in Gatineau, Quebec. She is of Mi'kmaq descent and a member of the Metapanagia First Nation. She is also now one of the 15 youth plaintiffs in the La Rose versus Her Majesty the Queen constitutional climate lawsuit, which was announced here earlier today. Please give a warm welcome. Nin de Luisi Sophia, ach nin nega bogo ero hotnog, marapanagia gleoe. My name is Sophia and I'm 18 years old. I'm Mi'kmaq and a member of the Marapanagia First Nation on the East Coast. I am here because the climate crisis is threatening my way of life and the very existence of my people. So today, I, along with 14 other youth plaintiffs from around the country, are suing the Canadian government.
As Mi'kmaq, we are threatened by the climate crisis, and we have worked so hard to regain our culture, practices, and heal our communities, only for the Canadian government to take actions that once again put us in danger. That is why I fight for my people, my culture, and for our continued existence on our lands. Since time immemorial, the Blamo, the Salmon, has held a physical, cultural, and spiritual importance to the Mi'kmaq. The salmon used to fill our rivers, and now they're almost extinct. With all the devastating changes in our forest, the moose and populations have a sharp decline now. Those are our traditional foods. Many of our traditional activities and ceremonies, like our sweat lodges and gathering sacred medicines under the extreme heat or extreme weather events, are now under threat. As these ways of our people start to disappear, our youth start to miss out on the opportunities that our elders are supposed to teach us, like hunting and fishing. The, the future often looks catastrophic. Every day we are inundated with reports that glaciers are melting, countries are burning, and we are dangerously close to the point of no return. Every day we hear our political leaders say that they're dealing with the climate crisis head on in 10, 20, or 50 years. We listen to our political leaders declare climate crisis one day and then nationalize a pipeline the next. Shame on the Canadian government. Today we are tired of listening to their empty words. Myself and each of my co-plaintiffs in this lawsuit are experiencing climate change firsthand and we cannot afford to wait any longer. We know that we're in a climate crisis and we're acting right now. I'm here because I'm fighting to protect my culture and my way of life. I'm here because I believe it's the government's duty to protect me and others in this country and ensure that we all have a safe and livable future. I'm here to give voice to the other young people like me who are being harmed by climate change. We will not rest until these injustices are, co are committed by our government and are redressed. We need you to stand with us in our fight for climate justice and the power resides in the people. Thank you, Wulalio. Thank you, Sophia, and thank you again to all of the amazing 15 young plaintiffs. Um, where this case goes is going to be really exciting. Um, so next up, we're going to hear from uh, Joan Phillip and Grand Chief Stuart Phillip, as well as Chief Judy Wilson. So give them a warm welcome. Just do it now. He said, "Go up high, because uh, people want to see us." Wow! Woo! <laughs> 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 Why hustle hustle? Ipi isquis emshan and ipi snak zeal. I just said greetings, friends and relatives. <laughs> My traditional name is Amshan. I grew up in North Anna on the waterfront. And I just want to thank my Coast Salish relatives, the Squamish, the Musqueam, and particularly the Tsleil-Waututh, <laughs> for the opportunity to be here to speak with you. This is, you look awesome. <laughs> I'm just so honored. <laughs> honored to be here and it's it's all of us it's young it's the elderly it's the youth here i'm just so proud of all of you for being here 
<clears throat> My grandfather, back in 1967, he lamented the loss of our lands and our resources and our authority. And his dream was that a young people would pick up the tools of white man's success and ride out of the sea like the Thunderbird of old. And we are his dream come true. <laughs> and that was Chief, <laughs> my grandpa, Chief Dan George. And <laughs> He didn't say go home. <laughs> he said we had to all work together because pollution doesn't stop at our borders. <laughs> we share the same planet. We share the same climate change. And I really am honored to have heard the young people that are going to take Canada to court because you know what? Canada deserves it. <laughs> I always say what we don't accomplish today, we pass on to our children. Well, shame on us. <laughs> we need to change, and we need to change it now. So Lim Lim. Waikakwaitep, Chief Judy Wilson from the Nisqanith, from the Sequepam Nation. I want to acknowledge our coastal peoples here on unceded territory, the Tsleil-Waututh, Musqueam and the Squamish, for all their ancestors and all of the work they've done to keep our waters clean, to keep our Mother Earth intact, and to all walk the way that we all should. We need to do that because we need to support the Watch House. William George is here from the Watch House from Swallowtooth. Give him a big hand. And Kanahus was here giving a very strong message from the Tiny House Warriors and the, how they're defending our water and our Mother Earth from Trans Mountain Pipeline that they're saying they're going to have that pipeline constructed in the interior. We have to support the interior because we can't have that construction start because that, once that construction starts, it comes here. Do you want it here? No. We can't have Trans Mountain Pipeline continue. It's a billion dollar investment that should have went into what Cedar George was talking about, should have been our renewable resources because we need it for the future. I applaud and the Union of BC and Chiefs supported that, that action against the government from the youth. We'll support it and walk in every climate strike, every action that they do because they're leading the way for us. Our young people, give them a big hand. They have the courage that we didn't have to be able to take on the federal government. They have the courage that we didn't have to take on Trans Mountain. They have the courage to take all of the industry that's polluting our Mother Earth. They're taking them on. They're starting with the federal government. They're going to keep going till we can get our Earth, Mother Earth back in balance and harmony so that all of us could have a future. There shouldn't be only 1% making that decision for us. It should be the 99% of us. Because all of us matter to Mother Earth. All of us matter when it comes to clean water. There shouldn't be anybody without clean water or access to water. The blue communities that are coming to Vancouver is going to make sure water is affordable for everyone, to make sure everyone has accessible to water and also to housing. 
because there shouldn't be any homeless in our cities. There shouldn't be anyone going hungry in our cities or our First Nation communities. That's the big picture because they're causing the divisions. We're not. We're just trying to make sure we have a good way of life and we respect Mother Earth and that we can have our teachings and pass them on to the next generation so that our young generation is taken care of just like our ancestors did to make sure we have a future. Who wants to make sure our children and grandchildren have a future? I want you to shout it. Because that's the, that's the message our young people are taking that court action that they announced today. They need your support more than ever. We need to get behind them. We need to be able to make sure the federal government hears that loud and, loud and proud. Because the government, they're not hearing us. They're not hearing anything we do. They bought the pipeline without your consent. They bought the pipeline without our consent. They're trying to push it through our territories. They're trying to push it right through the whole of BC. They're trying to put tankers in the ocean that impact all of our southern residents, killer whales. That's not acceptable. None of it's acceptable. But you know, the indigenous people were standing with Victoria, with Vancouver and Burnaby. There's three to four million people just in the lower mainland. It's not just an indigenous issue, it's all of our issue. And I want to thank all of the young organizers. I've never seen such a, a, a group of amazing young people that have been doing a great job when we had the last few climate strikes or hundreds of thousands of people. And they're going to continue doing that work and they need your support as well. Don't forget to make a donation to them. Uh, don't forget to give them a supportive message back to them to let them know they're doing a good job. I've seen the work they've been doing. It's incredible work. And I seen the young people in the front line at the rally today, the young little girls that were with us walking and the young people, their voice is going to be heard. Trudeau, you better be listening to this message and this generation. This is the change. Uh, OCM, you know, I just have my heart to share a few words with you today while you're all here. Um, first of all, I want to thank each and every one of you. You know, I look in your eyes, I see the same concern, the same the love, the same compassion. So I want to thank each and every one of you for who you are, having in your hearts to be here today. Thank you. Haichka Ahosiam. You know, a, a few other things that, that warms my heart is when I bring that banner out that you see, the one that I hung off the bridge when we hung there for two days with a group of folks from Greenpeace. You know... I, I took that opportunity as, as a ceremony. I hung there in the elements protecting that water. You know, when, when I do those things, you know, I'm doing that for each and every one of you. We're, to Slay with Tooth has worked really hard on this, and we do this to protect what you guys love. That's what we're here for, to protect what you love. You know, I hear that bridge wake up at 4 or 5 in the morning. That's each and every one of you going to work. Pay your high mortgages. Pay your high gas prices. We're here to protect what you guys love. So again, you know, carry on with this emotion, you know, the motion that we have here is I can't express how much we need your help and we need to work together with the Watch House, with the Tiny House Warriors, is we have this momentum. There are studies that says if we can hold it one more year, it will not make economic sense for Canada to do this anymore. We need each and every one of you to come to the front lines. You know, every time I go in those rooms, I disrupt Trudeau, which is my favorite part of what I do, right? <laughs> you know, he makes my job really easy. So, again, I, I go in these rooms for you people. You know, again, I look in your eyes. I see the love and compassion. So my hands are up to each and every one of you. I love you guys so much. Thank you. Why peace not seal as squeeze a seut in our insilitian language that's simply good day my dear friends and relatives my traditional name is a seut otherwise known as Grand Chief Stuart Philip
President of the Union of BC Indian Chiefs. I've been at this for over 40 years, and I can tell you that I've stood on these stairs countless times, and I have never in all my time seen a crowd this big. I want to thank the organizers, the young people, the, the brilliance of the young people, the commitment, the dedication. It's absolutely amazing. So many times we've stood on these stairs and talked about social justice. We talked about uh, violence against all peoples on the part of police agencies. We talked about missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls. We talked about the climate crisis. And one of the things that all of the speakers would lament was the need to have a popular movement to mobilize the entire population because we know, we absolutely Absolutely no, and it was proven in the last election. We cannot rely on governments to protect the land and the people. For the sake of our grandchildren, our children, and those generations yet to come, all of us as grandparents, as parents, as aunts and uncles, we must take our power back. We can no longer afford to delegate that power to governments that do not listen, that continue to cater to the corporations, continue to devastate and destroy Mother Earth, that must stop. As we move into the future, we must continue to build, we must continue to network, we must continue to sustain, we must sustain this movement if we ever hope to stop TMX and all of those destructive major resource projects. And I too want to thank everyone for coming out today. Joan and I have been blessed with 15 grandchildren. That's what this is all about. It's about our grandchildren and future generations and I want to thank you. I want to thank each and every one of you for being here today, for picking up your responsibilities. And I look forward to seeing you on November 29th. And again, I just, um, I love you all. Why, Lim Lim? Okay, so we're looking for a little boy. His name is Jay Lynn. So I don't know how this works, but he's out here missing somewhere. His parents are looking for him. His name is Jay Lynn. He's missing. Oh, you got him? Oh, good. We found him. <laughs> Jay Lynn. <laughs> I really want to honor uh, young people, particularly people like Autumn Peltier. And when I see young people like that, I, I know in my heart of hearts that our future is secure, that we can pass the torch on to those that are, that are coming behind us, picking up our responsibilities. And I really am so honored to introduce to you Greta.
so glad to see you. I'm giving her a little gift. It's, it's got a hummingbird on it. And it's, the hummingbird's the only bird in the world that can fly back backwards. So I felt it fitting that it'd be a gift for Greta as she's both beautiful and unique. Okay, yeah. Yeah. There we go. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for everything okay. you do. We're just Thank you so blessed to have you. No. <laughs> Thank you all so much for coming here today. It is unbelievable how many, how many you are. Police say about 15,000. And uh, so it is an honor for me to be here with you today. Thank you. I would like to begin by acknowledging that we are fortunate to be able to gather on the unceded territory of the Coast Salish people, particularly the unceded traditional territory of the Musqueam, Squamish and Slay Watooth nations. William, can you get the drummers to stand? Mm -hmm. And we, of course, today stand in solidarity with the young plaintiffs, with the brave young plaintiffs who are suing the Canadian government today. And it is always so, so hopeful to see this every Friday. This is a movement with millions upon millions of people telling world leaders to act on the science and demanding a safe future for us and for everyone. And together we will make a change. And I'm honored to stand next to Seven Collis Suzuki who addressed world leaders during the first COP in Rio de Janeiro, 1992. Yeah. 27 years ago, at the age of 12, she said, quote, at school, even in kindergarten, you teach us how to behave in the world. You teach us not to fight with others, to work things out, to respect others, to clean up our mess, not to hurt other creatures, to share, to not be greedy. Then why do you go out and do the things you tell us not to do? Also, I am fighting for my future. Losing my future is not like losing an election or a few points on the stock market. Seven told the world everything the world needed to know 27 years ago. And the science told us, told our world leaders everything they needed to know 27 years ago. If people, if people would have listened back then, 
the world will be a completely different place than it is today. But the world... But the world ignored her. And world leaders continue to choose to look away from this crisis even today. According to the Global Carbon Atlas, global CO2 emissions have increased by approximately 65% from 1992 to 2018. Around 50% of all CO2 emitted since 1751 have been emitted since 1992. Yeah. If world leaders would have started to take action back then when this crisis became known to them, then imagine the sufferings that could have been prevented. It is shameful that for so long the ongoing climate and ecological emergency has been ignored. It is the year 2019 and the people in power are still acting as if there was no tomorrow. And we young people are telling them to stop doing that, to stop ignoring the consequences of their actions and inactions, to stop leaving their mess for someone else to clean up, because we do not want to do it for them. The people in power need to start to realize what they are doing to future generations, to us, and especially to people in parts of the world who are already being affected and suffering from the climate and ecological crisis. If the adults really loved us, they would at least do everything they possibly could to make sure that we had a safe future, a future to look forward to. But they are not doing that. As it is now, it feels like they are doing the exact opposite. That they are desperately trying to change the subject every time the climate crisis comes up. That they are trying so hard to delay the actions required from preventing this crisis from getting worse. Because, because they are so afraid of being unpopular and to make uncomfortable decisions. It is like they are selling our future for their comfort and profit. And yet they have the nerve to look us in the eyes and tell us that they are doing enough. Well, whatever they are doing, they are doing it wrong. We are starting to see through their lies and we will hold them accountable for their actions. We will be we will be a constant reminder that they are failing. And that constant reminder is what we are today. And every Friday, every single day that goes by without sufficient action being taken and when the science is being ignored. Because we are not just some kids skipping school or some adults who are not going to work. We are a wave of change and together we are unstoppable. <laughs> we
we will rise to the challenge, hold those responsible for this crisis accountable, and we will make world leaders act. We can and we will. And if you feel threatened by that, then I have some very bad news for you. This is just the beginning. We will continue. Because change is coming, whether you like it or not. Thank you. And, and I think people would be very happy if you seven would say a few words, if you want to. This is an, uh, an amazing moment right now. Not only for myself, I look out into the crowd and I see so many faces that I know from a generation ago. They come to every single march. They organize in our community here in Vancouver. They organize in Ottawa. Ran into Elizabeth May, she's here. I saw Mel Lehan in the crowd down there. I see my own mom and dad. I look up in the crowd uh, in the march. My mother, Tara Cullis. My father, David Suzuki. The Grand Chief here has been working for over 40 years. And so have so many of you. We have been here and we will continue to be here. And Greta, you have ignited a tinder that has been gathering for over 30 years. This time, we cannot afford to wait another 27 years. We can feel the change. And I just want to say to all the youth here, the youth who are stepping up, some of the youth, the, the litigants who are taking Canada to court are under 10 years old. I want to say to you, we are with you. We are standing with you. And we will bring the change we need to see. Thank you for the honor. Let's hear it for Yeah. And let's hear it for Greta and for Seven and for all of the other amazing leaders on these stairs. Woo! This energy for climate justice that we've created together today, this isn't going anywhere. We are going to keep coming together because we are unstoppable. Another world is possible. Together, we are unstoppable. Another world is possible. We are unstoppable. Another world is possible. We are unstoppable. Another world is possible. Once more. We are unstoppable. Another world is possible. This means that we need to keep showing up. Who here will commit to joining us on November 29th? Woo! Woo! You can soon find more information about November 29th on our social media and we will have more details.
Amazing. So thank you all for coming out today. Um, this is the end of the strike part of the day, but we're going to be sticking around. We're going to be playing music because climate justice is about creating a more joyful world. It's about creating a world that works for more people. Um, and I think a great way to practice that is by having a dance party. So we're going to play music. Feel free to stick around and to talk to all of the other incredible people here. Thank you. Thank you so much, Vancouver.